Hey, this is Stu, and I'm here to talk to you about the all-new Magic Bullet Colorista 4. Magic Bullet Colorista is all about color correction, and I've got this great 4K clip here. I'm just going to start off by adding Colorista 4 to the clip. Now, if you're familiar with Colorista, you probably recognize this interface over here. We've got the three-way color corrector, we've got our awesome hue and saturation controls, and a tone curve down here. But if you're used to working with this in Premiere, you also know that sometimes this area over here gets a little cramped. Well, I want to show you this fancy new button that we've got, open as a panel. And when you do that, you get the Magic Bullet Colorista 4 panel. That's right, Colorista now works as a panel inside of Premiere Pro and After Effects. And you can see what that gives us, a much bigger, less cluttered user interface and a much more visual look for a lot of the important controls here. In fact, you'll notice two new controls right off the bat, color, temperature, and tint. And because of the panel design, we can make these sliders colorized so you can intuitively see what they do right off the bat. It's really great. It's also super handy to be able to have color, temperature, and tint be separate from the highlights control, which is how we used to kind of do that kind of color correction. But there's more to the panel than just decluttering. The panel also has an awesome responsive layout. So if I expand it over, you'll see that it resizes, but at a certain point, it gets so big that it pops over and goes double wide. This is my favorite way to run Colorista because everything I need is right here in front of me. I love this. You can also save workspaces. So I've got a Colorista 4 workspace here. This is a pretty cool way to run it too. Stretched out across the bottom of your screen, this is really a great way to really focus your work on color correction. Or if you've got a multiple monitor setup like my buddy Gregory here, you can devote an entire screen to your color correction interface. All right, so what can we do with this fancy panel here? Well, let's get into color correcting this footage. Now, the first thing it's important to know is that this footage is log. And oftentimes what we'd do for that would be to go down here and start working on kind of a contrast curve to convert it into video space. But Colorista 4 also now supports lookup tables. So you'll see this LUT menu down here. I'll grab this. And you'll see a nice selection of both creative and also technical lookup tables. And we've got one here called Universal Log. I'm going to choose that. You can see that it does a great job of converting the footage into the right color space, leaving all my controls available for any further adjustments I want to make. So I like this LUT for this shot. Now let's get into doing some color work. There's one other adjustment we can do here, and this is purely optional, but there's this My Footage Is control up here. The default is video, but you can also choose log. I'll go into this in a separate tutorial, but there's a slight difference in terms of how some of the exposure and color balance controls work in log. If you're curious about it, I'll tell you about it in a separate tutorial. So let's kind of get a little bit of a look dialed in here. Now, if you remember, before we applied Colorista, we could actually see some nice detail. Because this shot is log, we could see some really cool detail out the window here. And we're starting to lose that a little bit because of the contrast we're adding, especially if I brighten up the shot a little bit. Colorista 4 has an all-new highlight recovery control, and it's very powerful and something you're probably going to want to use a lot. If your corrections and adjustments have pushed some highlights into the clipping zone, and you can see that's exactly what's happening here see how these values here are above 100 watch highlight recovery just bring them right back and now we can see some subtle detail out the window again and we've got a much more kind of soft filmic roll off into the highlights it's a really nice effect and you'll notice as always colorista is mercury enabled in premiere pro and playing back in real time now let's move on to the next shot in our timeline we haven't touched this one yet but you see something interesting happened here in premiere i have Selection follows playhead selected, which is a really nice feature when you're doing color work. You'll see that as I just move the playhead to the next clip, it automatically gets selected. And you'll also notice in the Colorista panel, all the settings reset. Now, if I go over to effects controls, there's no Colorista on this clip yet. I could go to effects and apply it, but I actually don't need to do that. All I need to do is when I'm looking at this shot, just touch any of these controls and I'm color correcting with Colorista. The effect is automatically automatically applied seamlessly for me behind the scenes. The same thing happens if I choose a LUT, and now I can start working on this shot. Maybe I'll add a little vignette to the shot and a little contrast. Now I started to dial in some contrast in the point curve, and this is familiar if you're used to the previous Colorista. We've got these parameterized controls over the curve, so I can adjust the contrast, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. But we've also got a new control in Colorista 4 that I think you're gonna be very excited about. Just click on the curve and add points. You can add as many as you want and you can adjust them to get just the right curve. But when you do that, you don't give up this parameter control. 
you can still adjust contrast midtones. Even as you add complex points to create your own custom curve, these controls are still available to you. This is like the best of both worlds when working with curves. Really excited about this. All right, let's move on to the next shot. I've already got Colorista on this shot, and you can see as I pop over to the shot, the settings on the panel automatically update to reflect the new shot. Now you may be wondering, what about working with multiple layers of Colorista? We've got you covered. So let's go ahead and add a new Colorista before the first. We're gonna use this Colorista just to brighten up his face. So I'm gonna add an effects mask, just place it over him, soften it up a little bit, tuck it away from her just a little bit. Now let's pop back over to the panel. Up here you'll see, we've got a menu to choose between the two Coloristas we've applied. So this Colorista is the overall look, and this Colorista is for his face. So over here, I'll just pull up the highlights a little bit just on his face, try to be subtle about it, maybe bring the mids down a little bit to compensate. There we go. Now let's just check how that's gonna work. That's pretty good. Add a quick keyframe for that, and another, and we're good. This correction is a great opportunity also to show an important new control in Colorista 4. Switch to the face correction here. We've got just a strength slider here. So I've got two different adjustments that made up his face correction, but I can ramp them in and out easily with just one slider, this strength slider here. Super handy, and of course that's keyframeable. You'll see when any of these controls in the panel are at their defaults, the parameter name gets ghosted out. So only the controls that you've adjusted highlight, which makes it really easy to see what you've done to a shot. Speaking of multiple layers of Colorista, the other thing we've changed a little bit in this version is the keyer. The Colorista keyer has always been one of the industry's best and easiest to use keyers. I'm gonna add a second Colorista to this shot, and I've got a separate tutorial that goes into more detail on this, but I just wanna show you what we've changed in the keyer real quick. So click on edit key, and you can see, as usual, we just start by selecting the color, and then we've got these simple controls to just scrub on the image and plus out the selection. So I can scrub over here and get more of the car, get that lower saturation top of the car. So what's new about this? Well, it's like just a slightly new layout. And we've got a new control over here called the hue lightness control. We always had the ability to dial in the lightness parameters vertically on this scope here. So you were controlling what uh, lightness values you were keying, but we've now integrated the hues into that as well. So it's just another way to see the hue ranges that you're keying. So I can really see like a nice box around the oranges and reds that I'm keying here. It's a little bit easier than using the hue saturation scope, which also controls hue. The two work together. The whole thing is the familiar keyer control that you're used to, but a little bit refined. So that's Magic Bullet Colorista 4. We've taken the most powerful color correction software available right inside your nonlinear editor and made it even better. But there is one more thing I wanna show you. Now, as Wonderful as this panel is, and as elegant as these controls are, I know that color correction can be intimidating for people. Not everyone is a professional colorist, and we want everyone to be able to do great color work with Magic Bullet Colorista. So we've got something to help you. It's called Guided Color Correction, and I'm gonna blaze through it here. I've got a separate tutorial that shows you how to use it, but I have a feeling you're not gonna need it because the tool is the tutorial. Let me show you just very quickly what it's all about. Guided Color Correction is going to walk you through the process of doing the basic balancing out of black levels, white levels, midtones, contrast, saturation, and then finally color balance. Throughout all of this, we give you the tools to do this accurately, but we also encourage you to use your eye. And at the end of the process, you'll have a nicely balanced shot. But the results have just edited some of the basic controls in Colorista, so you can keep working from there, knowing that you started from a nice balanced out position. You may use this on every shot, or you may only use it once. You may use it when you're just learning color correction, or you may rely on it throughout your work. The point is, we believe that color correction is important and it's important for everyone to feel confident in doing it. And we're gonna walk you through the steps and help you get the best possible results. So that is Magic Bullet Colorista 4. An all new panel in Premiere and After Effects, Mercury playback as always, new temperature and tint controls, a brand new point curve that works with the parameterized curve, a new highlight recovery tool, a new keyer, lookup table support, a strength control, and an all new guided color correction feature.